Hello and welcome to my channel. It's Hila here, Saturday Night Stitch, and thank you so much for tuning in. Today's video is a browse through of the April 2024 issue of Bread Style. But before we jump into it, I went around my garden, and currently, the most stunning flower in my garden is the camellia from my camellia japonica bush. It's also known as a common camellia or Japanese camellia. It is an evergreen shrub, so it means that throughout the year there are always these handsome, glossy green leaves. And around February, March, April time, you get all of these fabulous, beautiful blooms. I have two of them. One of them is this lovely red, pinky red over here, and I have one that's in a pure white. So... I made this posy and wherever you are in the world, I'm sending you these flowers and hoping that you're having a fantastic day. Right, so we're just going to pop those over there. Let's see, can we get in to see it? Right. Okay, so we have here a uh, Birda for 2024 and wow can you believe that we're already in april i have the line drawing so we are going to dive into it now then this issue i have to say that um it had a lot of things that i quite liked but nothing that sort of jumped out at me as i must sew it um, but let's get into it. So I think that they also have um, a lot of patterns that they are increasing the size range to, which I've had this theory for a while now that Bird has been doing a lot more repeats because they are slowly increasing the size range of their extensive catalog of patterns. Um, so as you can see here, all of the ones that have the pink dots, they're the ones that have been given the expanded size range um, which is which is quite a lot. So this is definitely a very separate heavy issue, which is a good thing, I think. <laughs> right, so first off, very much heavily leaning into the 70s floral style. So um, the skirts, are, hemlines are becoming longer. And here, if you look at the detail, we've got an epaulette style, a little bit of a puffy sleeve over here that tapers in quite beautifully. Some shaping around the bust and we've got some sleeve vents. It's been made in a polyester crepe which is a little bit of a see-through and I think that the fab fabric is quite a lovely one. I would have really liked to see this dress without the belt just to get an idea of how it actually looks without it. Another option with this dress would be to actually make a self-faced uh, belt using the fabric and that I think would make it look very elegant. So the Maxi Dresser Lover in me really wanted that one. However, I have to be a bit more practical. And then we have the blouse that has the inbuilt tuck in it. And I never quite understand the style reasoning behind these sorts of blouses. If you want to create a tuck, a front tuck, I think you just do that with a shirt. But to actually integrate it and to sew it in, for me, the practical thinker in me just thinks, okay, this is going to add so much ironing issues because it is a shirt. So you're using shirting fabric, of which here they've used a cotton blend. They haven't quite said what the blend is. I never quite understand the logic behind this particular one. So consequently, not quite a big fan. And then the midi dress number 104, it's got this interesting ruching detail here. It's sleeveless, so kind of perfect for summer, really. And then it has a little tie detail here. And if I'm not mistaken, can you use the tie to decide how much ruching you want? And there's a cute little bow tie over here. So it's got quite a few cute details. However, I do think that when I look at the picture of fit, the fabric that they used doesn't quite work well for it because the ruching, if you look on here, it looks really stiff without any movement. And I really think a viscose crepe would have been, or uh, a linen viscose blend or a crepe, a fabric that has more drape than a cotton blend, I think works beautifully with ruching because it gives them a very um, luxurious look and feel. 
and the cotton here just kind of fails to do that but i think it does have some lovely bones not so much for me i can't carry ruching off no matter how hard i try i've made a few things that had ruching and it just didn't quite work and it's because i've got very straight athletic lines and so anything with ruching super curvy it's like my body is fighting that and it just creates disharmony but i think that when it works on people that have the curves for it it's absolutely gorgeous and then we've got the cropped shirt over here um so yeah very simple with a button at least there's no d-ring on this one so that's pretty cool i got a very 80s vibe from this whole section here i just feel like there's something very 80s about the styling of the shirt and then they've put some little daisy trim on the pocket as well as on the collar over here I feel like we should have just committed and actually had daisy buttons down uh, there. I'm not a big fan of cropped shirts personally. I always like be, to be able to tuck in my shirt. Okay, and then the one thing that I definitely would make for summer that you'd never see me wearing in spring, particularly here in England, we're still sort of in the backwards of winter. But I do like this sleeveless top here. So top number 101, it definitely got an asterisk for me as something that I could make later on as a really lovely basic to go with skirts and shorts in summer. So I thought that this one was quite a decent um, basic made in jersey. And then we have here a very 70s style peasant top. So last year we saw a lot of these peasant style tops except for they had the elasticated neckline and in fact I did make one um, like this last year actually but it had the elasticated neckline but similar square neckline except for instead of the band you have the elastic but this time you know it's just straightforward um, band so clearly the whole peasant look is still, the boho peasant look is still um, around. And then we have the bustier top, which um, I recognize this. It's the top half of the dress from for 2020, which was the Judy Garland dress. So it's basically this, exactly the same, except for, obviously, this side grommets have been added and then lacing has been added um onto it all i have to say when i look at this is why i don't i don't see the point and even with the styling to me this just it doesn't add up it doesn't make any sense and the necklines are fighting she has it layered over a top that clearly has more of a bateau neckline and then this particular top has got the straight neckline. So you have the straight neckline going on there and then the bateau is peeking through. Um, yeah, I wasn't a big fan of this one. I thought, okay, a little bit adventurous. Good way of trying to use something that's already there. But however, the execution to me didn't quite work. And then we've got the cargo pant. <laughs> Version number 268 <laughs> over the last few years. They are everywhere, these cargo pants. Um, yeah, but what's different about this one is it's been given some segmentation in the middle. So it's been divided into thirds. And we've got the ever-present bows. That's thanks to the catwalk shows, which basically said that bows are going to be the trend for the season. And so now they pop up in a lot of these um designs and then we have the very simple a-line skirt with a center front button placket and some dust uh, dots to give it a bit of shaping perennial you can never go wrong with that and we have a simple top over here drop shoulder very minimal shaping i think that the dots are in there ornamentally really because when you look at it it is quite a loose fit and just goes straight down and it's been made in a very i would say 80s style prairie print fabric so it's very cute and very charming and they've added a trim to the hem over here and what stops this open neckline from just sort of drooping off your shoulders is that you've got this little strap over here so that this is a strap so in knowing the line drawing it looks like that's the back but no actually <laughs> this is um a strap that stops it from dropping over so you've got this really wide back and you should be able to make it as a pullover 
And then this skirt, I did find quite intriguing. I quite liked the look of this skirt. So it uses pin tucks to give the shaping around the waist. However, for me, any extra bulk around the waist or around my belly, it just makes me look so much stockier around the belly in a way that doesn't work for me. So I've found that for me personally, I can't really have too much embellishments around the waist, but I think... You know, um, if you can carry this off, this is a very lovely, simple sort of skirt that just is, um, I think, quite pretty. And then we have the cardigan jacket thingy that doesn't have any fastenings and it's just perfect for spring as a layer with some tiny little uh, pockets. They've made it in a very interesting gauze-like fabric. It looks like a... Um, a quilted gauze but very pretty with the pink and the pink trims and apparently floral accessories are flowers are in um season i always love flowers i think flowers should be in season all the time and that's why that section was all on flowers and then we move on to the more red and blue burgundy trend and we have this uh, pinstripe dress over here which has um I want to call, what is it, like straps on the side. So the D-rings have made another appearance that is now four out of four for 2024 with the D-rings. Like each issue has had the D-rings. And you have them on the side, presumably, to pull them in for more shaping if you want to. I like the neckline on this dress. I like the fact that it's sleeveless and even the back of the dress here. I think that that's quite nice. I'm not convinced about these excess design details i may be very wrong and i'll keep an eye on the bird community to see what happens with it but for me you just sort of cover that over i really quite like the neckline perhaps i'm not adventurous enough however <laughs> moving on we've got top number one two five which is a lovely um top that of i was absolutely drawn to it because i do like tops that show off my shoulders particularly in summer however we are so far away from summer here in england i can't even begin to fathom uh, making this and it is also very similar to a dress that i've already made from 2019 although the dress didn't have the collar so the you know it, it was a dress and a top pattern but it's exactly the same with the zipper down the center back and this cutaway sleeve but this one just has the collar which i think the collar is a very cute little addition to it so there isn't an immediate need for me to make this because i do already have something quite similar and then we have that skirt again but this time it's just a little bit longer and it's been made in a solid fabric and i have to say a big fan i like how it looks in the solid fabric and i think that the styling is very much on point here I quite like the styling on here oh and then we have this the trend elegant today pattern which i must say did catch my eye and i think maybe 10 years ago i probably would have wanted to make this um and wear it However, I can't for the life of me think where this top would be suitable for me to wear. I like the asymmetry details on it. I also like, I, I really like it. I like the shaping that it has and it looks really great on this. And I think even with the styling they got, it's so lovely, especially with the silver shoes and the shiny um, fabric that they have used. Although I personally wouldn't make it in a shiny fabric. But I, I really did like this. And I did put a little asterisk in my head on this one. Because I was like, I, I quite like this. And I think it's the sort of thing that if my girls were old enough for me to be making this, I'd probably have jumped onto making it for them, the whole entire outfit. I also liked the trousers when I saw the preview, the first look. Because I'm in the market for some uh, trousers that I need to make to fill some gaps in my uh, spring wardrobe. However, I don't like the segmentation here. I'm not very good with precision and corners and lining up seams. And I just thought this is not necessary for me. It's like, why? So, you know, just do it in one piece and it looks really gorgeous. So, yeah, I quite liked this. And that's another one that goes up to 48 as well. 
And then we have the dolman sleeve dress, which is absolutely fabulous. And the styling and the shooting for it, I, I thought that they get 10 out of 10 just for everything. The location and the blue skies and the projection of the uh, powerful elegance that it gives. Mm. Top, top marks and even the accessories with the silver and then with the silver chain everything is really top marks obviously you probably know i'm going to say the silver chain is a little bit of an extra that i think if you live the high life and you can get away with doing stuff like this then that's fine but for me <laughs> this would just be getting stuck in everything in the washing machine and in the dishwasher but i think that it's got some good bones and i can see this being a popular pattern sans chain without the chain it would work really quite well and instead of having this collar coming all the way out like it does on here you just let it finish off over there very lovely very elegant personally i'm not a big fan of the dolman sleeve it doesn't quite work well for me because i think i've got very broad shoulders and i think that they tend to work well on they work better if you've got narrower shoulders and maybe if you are fuller in the bust because with this sort of sleeve, you don't have to worry about, um, you know, a full bust adjustment or fitting around the bust because the sleeve is, it, it's already designed to have a lot more space. It's not designed to be super fitted around there. So yeah, I think that this was a good one. The other one that I quite liked, however, I don't have a need for currently in my wardrobe, was this jacket. And to be honest with you, I think the reason why I mostly like it is because of the presence of the belt, which gives it a bit more shaping. I'm not a big fan of the oversized blazers, but I do like it when they have some shaping over here. And I like the addition of these flaps. I don't know, I just think that they add a certain je ne sais quoi to it and then we have that simple top again but this time it's been made in a more uh, modernistic looking shiny stiff fabric quite futuristic if you put in the styling with the earrings as well but not a big fan personally and those are the details over there and some lovely embroidery i'm actually doing an embroidery project which i hope to finish in december so it was nice to see that and I thought, wow, you can do embroidery on net and it looks quite gorgeous. And then the masterpiece designer pattern oh, is um, the coat dress, which um, I, I, I had some thoughts on this and my thought was that it looks really lovely if you would just keep this side and just mirror it on the other side and that would make a really stunning dress in in my opinion i i feel like the lightness these are very stringy and they're very fl flimsy it looks very very fragile the the straps that are holding it up versus how very strong the rest of the design looks and uh, yeah i just think that if you make it like that it would make a really fun little black dress for cocktails or something like that or you can just make it in this format where it just makes the the double breasted i'm quite curious to see if um if anybody is going to make it and how it is going to to look on it but it's certainly something very different and very unique so if you're in the market for something you know very different very unique for an event or for something like that and um, then this would be great i'm not sure that this translates to something that you'd be able to do as everyday wear you know because you also have to think about the undergarments <laughs> and i'm looking at it i just get cold thinking about oh exposed shoulders because oh as i say it's to sound like a breaking record we're still experiencing some winter here in england okay and then we have this really lovely 70s style dress that i was just like i want to make this please can i make this but my wardrobe said no you shall not make another dress until you've sorted out all your gaps in the wardrobe but this is a really lovely dress it's boho style peasant style would work so great with some floaty rayon chalice it's just it's right up my alley oh i love it love it but i can't and i must say that this spirit of summer section i loved this so much because it really 
got me thinking about the summer holidays and what I want to do in the summer holidays. And I just, I felt like it made me happy, this section, because I was thinking about the seaside and stuff like that. And then we have a really cute, very cute, simple summery style top with the freely sleeves over here and the freely neckline has been made in a lovely little organic batiste fabric so it's going to be light fluffy perfect with shorts i also really loved this dress but again it's very similar to the 2019 dress that i already made except for this one it's just been given a, a frill at the bottom and it's got the tie detail at the back and again how gorgeous absolutely gorgeous is the sand um and the sun and this actually got me thinking about booking our summer holidays i'm in the process of booking our summer holidays uh this week and then the jeans oh my days what a wonderful set of jeans because a they are high-waisted um i've come to the conclusion that high-waisted jeans are eternal and they work best for me um yeah and so it was fabulous to get this pattern. So this is one that I have marked as something that I'll probably make closer to September because I need them more for winter. Currently for spring and summer, I'm trying to work on building up um, my separate uh, wardrobe for for those ones. And currently I have uh, some jeans that I wear. They're Levi's 521 high-waisted jeans. And they're working, so I don't necessarily need to make these ones, even though they're such a great... Um, it's, it's great that I have them as a backup for when I need to make it. And then I like this. It reminds me of the Bador tops, the Bridget Bador tops, because it's got that lovely square neckline. Um, and again, it's one of those that I thought, okay, when the time is right for when my wardrobe needs it, I would probably like that. But for now, I just couldn't get away with wearing uh, stuff like that. And I'm really trying to be more conscious of making things that actually suit my wardrobe. And then it's that same top, but it's been lengthened into a dress. And it's the bodycon dress, the body conscious dress, um, which definitely needs to have some proper uh, undergarments in order for it to be lovely and smooth and then we have the wedding section which has got a repeat of some patterns from I think it's 2010 yes I think it's the March 2010 issue so we have this lovely dress with the sweetheart neckline and the mermaid style thing and then we have oh such a cute little top the cami top and it's got a double strap I have a cami top pattern that I love to make and wear. Camis are so useful to have in summer. And again, all of these patterns, I'm pretty sure they're available in the March 2020, 20, no, not 2020, 2010, March 2010 issue. I'm pretty sure. And then we have the sheath dress that has all of this really wonderful shaping in the form of the Dior darts over there and some hip darts. Really fabulous stuff. You can't see the detail because they've gone for a hot pink that doesn't show it. But you could have a, a lot of fun with the contrasting detail. And then we have the floaty dress with the fabric that has got some frou-frou at the bottom there. So you could walk around like a, a cloud of confetti that's suspended in air. Um, and again, this cape, I've definitely seen this cape before. I can't remember which. I think it's from the 2010s or the... Yeah, I've seen this cape before. Okay, lovely uh, wedding guest outfit. And then it's the skirt. The skirt comes up in so many variations. I've seen this so many times before. As well as the wedding dress over here. This is a repeat, straight up repeat pattern. And I don't think they've increased the size range on it. Same with this blazer here. That has the reviers and the lapels quite gigantic on the bottom bit. And you can kind of see it uh, over there so again this is a repeated um a repeated pattern sadly um but you win some you lose some and so this is what we have in this issue of bird and they had a section where they were showing um what people made sort of a birder in the wild kind of thing which i think is really really awesome so that's what we have here in this issue and i have to say i haven't picked anything to make from this because i actually added another thing that i'm making from the march 2024 issue and i'll talk about that in another video but i'm actually making um, a second so no that will be the third thing so i'm making three things from the march 2024 issue 
nothing actually properly jumped out at me that was required to fill my wardrobe of which this year I'm really kind of trying to focus on doing gaps in the wardrobe and once I've filled those gaps in the wardrobe I can start doing more of the just sewing for for fancy you know the fanciful sewing now it's your turn. Let me know about this issue. Have you made anything from this issue? Will you be making anything from this issue? And I will see you in the comments down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you've watched until the end, you rock. You are a rock star. And these flowers are just for you. And until I see you next time, happy sewing. Bye.